the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. spent his childhood tinkering in a shop, building and creating, which brought to life his newest invention. He is the founder of Wood Pellet Products and the owner of Timber Stoves. Please welcome Tyson Traeger. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with the founder of Timber Stoves and one of my good friends, Tyson Traeger. How are we doing? I'm doing great. Thank you, Gabe. Just living Appreciate it up. Appreciate you having me on. No, thank you for coming on. You know, you know we're chatting before this. Uh, we're really excited about this episode because this is our 100th episode of the Shades of Entrepreneurship podcast. Uh, I specifically saved this one for Tyson. I told him right before, he's like, good, save me a good number. But before we get on to that, before we get into Timber Stoves, Tyson, go ahead and introduce who is Tyson Trigger. Thanks, Gabe. I appreciate you bringing me on. It's an honor because we are not only just friends, but we're both going down a path of leadership. And uh, we've got a lot of common ground. So this is going to be a really fun conversation. Um, I own Timber Stoves. It's, uh, it's my mission to bring heat to every backyard patio. Uh, it, uh, I, I do want to say, I, I just like uh, what we're going to talk a lot about um, in this uh, episode, I'm, I'm hoping to share uh, the, the leadership qualities and skills, but uh, it's about coming together. And I wanted to say, I, I apologize for not coming in person, because for me, uh, there's a lot better grounds to stand on when you're talking face to face with somebody. I'm in the depths right now, the trenches of, uh, of small business. This is our peak season. Uh, so for us, me leaving is always an issue. Uh, it, it's part of the drive to, uh, to grow the businesses, to be there at all times for them. So that's uh, unfortunate for our meeting, but I'm sure we can cover the basis. So thanks for the opportunity. Um, looking forward to, to getting finally uh, to tell a story yeah. that uh, is fun. It's, it's cool because uh, the way I see it, and I think a lot of the, the strategy that goes along with success is to always see uh, the good uh, in what's happening, even when shit is hitting the fan. So, yeah. Uh, what do you want to know? Tell me, tell uh, me about Timber Stoves. Tell First, let's start it off on the, let's start on the high level. What is Timber Stoves? Give the listeners, what is Timber Stoves and, and why'd you create it? I own this company. Um, it's called Timber Stoves. We manufacture outdoor living equipment. Uh, our specialty right now is patio heaters. Uh, we are changing the market of outdoor heat because we have brought to fruition a product that outdoes any other outdoor heating product in the category of, of heaters. So it's an opportunity for us to do all fun amazing things with business, which is uh, bring something up from the bottom. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it's all about struggle, right? And you get, you get to do all of that with a new product. And it's fun because uh, we know we got something cool and uh, we're going places and uh, it's, a, it's always a struggle, but um, we've got this product that we know outdoes anything out there. Starting to see some, uh, some other competitors on the market. And it, it's just, it's so cool to be able to watch our business lead the way. And uh, that's, that's what's fun about this is uh, it's a team game for sure. It's a, it, it's a game to me. Yeah. You mentioned, you mentioned like, you know, this is a new product and you're kind of being, you know, kind of a pioneer without a frontier. How difficult it has it been for you as an entrepreneur to start a new business that really didn't have a space yet? 
Yep, that's uh, that's the game. Um, I think the challenge is with any product, not knowing how far can you take it because you don't have the analytics telling you that. Uh, you, you, you have basically the faith on what you're doing, your experience from your, your past uh, and, and your ability to cope with what is needed to be done. Um, it's, it's, it's a gamble. I mean, business is a gamble and, you know, I'm good at it. I'm not, I'm not very good at the blackjack table, but I'm real <laughs> good at gambling. Uh, it, it, it has to do with taking those risks um, because you don't get uh, to type in to Google Trends wood pellet patio heater and see some kind of analytical situation that gives you a forecast. It is up to you. And, uh, you know, if I go back and I think about, well, how, how did I know that, you know, what I was doing was going to work out? And is a good enough product to to continue on a a gamble like that. It really is asking your friends. It's getting the truth from the people around you that are getting uh, time around that product. Um, honesty, you know, you got to have people uh, giving you the truth. Um, one big factor for me is uh, you got to listen to people. Um, you know, there's people that invent things and and, and make products, but uh, just because it's a good idea, that doesn't do anything more than it just being a good idea. So you, you have to allow the process to work. And for me, that's listening to people, getting their suggestions. You know, every, everybody wants to lend a hand. You know, it's natural for us to want to help somebody or something uh, get better or improve. And so for us, it's really a, a neat thing to be able to take uh, consumers' opinions of things, take my workers' opinions th of things, and, and actually listen to them. Um, you know, as an entrepreneur, you, you're really driven by the fact that I'm going to go do this by myself, right? You, you, you know, you listen to Green Day, walk alone, right? You, you just, you power yourself by, by, by leading that path by yourself. But if you're not listening to the education around you that's going to enhance what that product is or should be doing then you're you're going to be you know floating in a back eddy and getting getting nowhere so i'm really fortunate to be able to have a lot of good people around me that um whether they're educated whether they've got the 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 common sense um, just from being in other businesses or, you know, having the experiences that bring them to me. I, I, I don't know why, Gabe, but I, I feel so blessed in regard to when, and I, my dad always said this, and I'm, I'm sure you heard this from your dad. It's definitely probably a small Catholic town thing, uh, but you will get what you need, right? And, and that, that, you know, whether that's a religious thing or not, um, it really rings true in this business because, the way you're heading the direction that you're going, yeah, uh, manifestation and whatever you want to call it, um, if you need that, right, you're going to end up with it, right? And I think that small small business in general is uh, as long as you're efficient and economic and uh, you understand that you can only use what is necessary, you're going to get, you know, as long as you, you're doing a lot of other things, uh, correctly, um, because there's business as we should be discussing is about failure. Um, it is not about success. Uh, but that, that ability to, to get to that next level definitely has to do with, with taking on uh, other people's opinions and, and, and collaboration and, and, and letting everybody else fail around you too. Uh, yeah. It's it's a game, man. The yep. game of small business. It certainly is. You know, one of the things you mentioned too was you, you're going through this process of creating a new product. And what was kind of that moment for you that you were like, you know what, this might I might have something here because you also mentioned you have to kind of quit when you know it's not good. We're getting advice. At what point were you like, you know what, I'm getting a lot of good advice. I think I got something. It really uh, wasn't until a few years ago. So I'm 13 years in, started in March, 2011. Um, 
we're, we're at a point now where aesthetics are, you know, more of what we're working on uh, in regards to the patio heater. We've got a couple real cool new additions to it uh, that'll be accessories that we're coming out with. But, you know, my drive is, is definitely a uh, new product, new product categories. We're working on some cooking stuff, which is just for me, you know, full circle. Right. Uh, so super fun. But uh, a few years ago, my wife, uh, I'm standing out on the patio daydreaming, you know, doing what I do on the patio, thinking about inventions and stuff and how to make things better. And she came out and she's like, do, do you ever think about uh, that, that you did that, that you made that, that you created that? And I, I'm like looking at her and I'm like, well, <laughs> what do you mean? I, I did make that. <laughs> it's, I, I think the, 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 ability to take and have an idea as long as there is a need for that product and, and i definitely have that going into this business uh you know these bullet points surrounding me of what am i gonna do uh you know you leave a corporate job and, and you want to go do your own thing because you just can't take it anymore so my my chance to take that to the next level was entrepreneurship. Um, you know, I'm in my young twenties and I'm, I'm thinking, man, the, the, the step to creating a product that is uh, able to reach people. And for me, it was able to reach the masses. Like, and I don't know who, who goes in business, not wanting to reach the masses. Right. I mean, I think that's all of us, but it, for me, it was like I, I watched my family create a, a, a product category um, that was so well known um, that it really made it uh, for me a bigger goal, I think, than others would have put in front of them that uh, what I wanted to create isn't just a design on a T-shirt. I wanted to create the next product category. And so for that, it, it did start with um, understanding, you know, what do people need? What do people want? What, you know, what do I know? What is my background? Uh, where can I go with, with, with a product? Uh, yeah, uh, for most people, it's going to be relative to what their history is and, and you know, where they come from. You know, for me, that was a big reason um, why I continued heading down this path uh, around wood pellets. And it, it just makes sense for me. It's like, you know, given uh, somebody a pen and paper and, 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 you know, not asking them to draw. I mean, it just, you, if you're built with the tools, um, you know, big football players, linemen, you know, they're big guys, you know, they got that given to them right out of the gate, right? I mean, you're going to be a, you're going to be a defensive end. You know, I mean, it's given to them. So, yeah, for me, uh, very blessed that I got the tools um, of being raised in, in a similar business around fire, around wood pellets. Um, but the category itself is, to me, what drove me to that product, you know, being around fire, having the ability to in some part play into this game of fire. I am a pyro. I grew up playing with fireworks, <laughs> burning things I shouldn't have burned. I I, and I'm this. sure we're all like that. I mean, that's the love of, yep. of this business is that, that, uh, that uh, red flower, you know, it has this ability that, you know, I don't even fully understand yet. And that's what's so cool. You know, why, why is Musk, you know, trying to do all this stuff with, with going places they nobody ever thought of going? Well, it's because it hasn't been done before. We don't understand it. Just like fire. I mean, there's very few gifts on this planet that do what fire does. And Gabe, I get to make the, the best fire there is on the planet. That's what I'm doing for a living. So to me, it's, it's a treat. It's all a treat. You know, a lot of things you've mentioned is we talked a lot about family and I can see the passion, right? Where does that, where does all this passion for this come from? It comes from my father. 
and I knew you would want to get around to this. I wrote some stuff down just so I had an idea of what to talk about. I've never done a podcast before, um, but uh, it comes down to this. And I wrote it. Our dads taught us well. And it's, it's because we grew up with fathers that cared. Um, that's it. Um, we, we grew up with fathers that cared. Uh, the, the depth of, of passion comes from that uh, emulation for life that our dads showed us. Uh, they loved their children. They loved going to church. They loved coaching sports. They loved, right? I mean, life. Those guys breathe life. Your dad breathes more life through music and spoons than I've ever seen in my life. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but that's, enough. that's where we get that passion. You know, we watch our elders enjoy living. We're old enough now that we understand life's not so bad. Uh, it, we're pretty fortunate to be standing here communicating through some crazy computer and you know so the passion the passion i think is easy i think i think we got that from our dads uh i think we got that from growing up in a small town uh from having to work together um it's all small town family uh stuff and and, and that's what's so great about i think getting to run a small business and get bigger and be able to broadcast that you know what is good about our business it's that we're doing things right and we get to teach that to the corporate world and 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 i got corporate world making my product gabriel all right so for me it's not that am i doing the right thing it's haha follow me follow me you will never get to be the leader but you can follow me right and, and I want to broadcast the ethical standards of what it means to run a business because it's not fair in a lot of regards to a lot of people uh, and a lot of uh, small problems that are associated um, or big problems that are associated with big business. Um, I, I would love to preach this entire session about small business and what it means to make stuff in America. I won't do that, but I will say for those that aren't making things in this country, they're losing. They are losing. They're losing their principles, their ethics, their ability to take care of their neighbor. Um, th th there's so many things that are wrong right now, and it can all be fixed by by allowing small businesses to be a success. Um, something we were talking about, and I always talk about with this with this kind of stuff with my employees. I'm I'm very transparent with my employees. Um, is, you know, a small business coalition where, you know, the advertising dollars is what it takes to move a product. And once you really get that movement, you can handle your own growth. But for a small business that doesn't get to that point, how are they supposed to be able to get to that point? So, you know, here you got all these corporate businesses wasting money. They don't care, you know, this direction or that. And a small business, all they really need is to get to that next level. You know, it's about working together. That's what small business is. It is about working together, uh, whether I'm buying my hardware from the guy down the street or the spring handles from Wilsonville, Oregon, or my paint from North Carolina. Um, all my stuff's coming from here. That feeds John, the neighbor, and it puts more guys in my shop. And it, dude, dude, I'm not going to talk about it because it's going to waste all our time. <laughs> but there's so many good things to making your product here. And that's something you'll see with timber stoves. You will never see us manufacture our product outside this country. There is a solid benefit. Um, you, you know what we did during COVID, Gabe? We doubled our business. You know what we did the year after our, after COVID? We doubled our business again. You know what corporate businesses were doing during COVID? Scratching their fucking heads. They had no idea what to do. You know why? Because they couldn't get their shit. You don't make it. Uh, what? You don't make it. No shit, you don't get it. You know what happens when I run into a problem of a mandrel head on a socket screw out here for this uh, spin spin gun we're running? I run to Napa Hardware. I grab the replacement socket head cap screw and I start back up again. And 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 it took literally less than twenty minutes to be back uh, up and running. 
all of that is because it's sustained through local business. I was able to do that in a short, efficient amount of time because it's accessible. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it, at the end of the day, you know, America was built on the back of small businesses, right? That's that's kind of the concept. Now, is this your first? It's got to get back to that point. Exactly. Now, is this your first venture as an entrepreneur or have you had other businesses before? No, I started out uh, with a, a company called, well, I, could, I did have a couple other small, small businesses. If you want me to start at the very beginning, when I left uh, the corporate world, I thought I was going to be a landscaper. I don't know why a lot of people think this. Uh, I've got a, a brother who's actually still in the business and he loves it. But getting uh, getting outside and getting that fresh air, you know, I think does so much for us. And that it might be why I did that. But started up a little landscaping business, did a couple friends' yards and stuff. And, you know, realized, oh, shit, business is harder than it looks. Made no money on the first couple projects and scared me out of, uh, out of that Uh then uh, then I uh, was a fly fishing guide for a little while, and uh, I spent a year in Wyoming uh, trying to chase that dream, um, working in a F- Orvis fly shop. It taught me a lot about the retail spectrum on that, and uh, taking people down the river really gave me the social uh, side of, uh, uh, of the one-on-one that it took with a customer. Um, and so after I got back from Wyoming, I got lonely is what happened. I'm out there in Jackson Hole and it's a nice place, but if you don't have friends, it's a, a, a fish can only mend a friendship for so long. We, uh, we basically, I say we, me and my dog, we headed back to, to hometown Mount Angel and uh, it was, you know, I think destiny that I met my wife, but I met my wife and uh, you know, you're lost in that first part of marriage. You don't know what the hell you're going to do. So career wise, I, Figured I'd give uh, the retail side of business a shot. Um, my family uh, made and sold a, a barbecue, and I figured I would s- sell that barbecue in a retail store, um, and then I would tie my uh, fly fishing background to that, and that's where Finn and Fire came from. Um, still in business in Redmond, Oregon today. Uh, that would be my first, I would say, business that I ran, um, but super great experience as far as me getting to test the waters. You know, I didn't know anything. I was 25 years old running a business, renting a old, uh, it's now a tattoo parlor, but uh, an old brick corner building, downtown Main Street, Redmond, Oregon, you know, uh, pretty, pretty strange town for, um, what I was trying to do, it was good, but a uh, pretty strange town for opening a new business, but uh, it was a great town, great opening, great start to, to my, uh, my world as a small business owner. Um, fail. Okay. Uh, fail. Uh, I sold it in three years, um, was able to sell the assets uh, for what I owed and washed my hands of it. Um, but the lessons that I learned in uh, the old men coming in, telling their fishing stories, people coming in with uh, broken barbecues that I would fix, or I would go do cooks and just, you know, all the things that uh, you do towards that business, right? That business was focused on selling barbecues and fly fishing equipment. Um, and it, it took all my time, all my energy, all my money. And it was awesome. Uh, would I ever do it again? To know that that is what it takes yeah, you, you got to put yourself in those predicaments. Um, I learned a shit ton from just going and doing it. It's a it's a big lesson that I give to all my guys is, you know, they think I'm some smart guy. I'm not some smart guy. I, I just stuck my finger in the socket and I know that it shocks you. <laughs> there you go. Now you look yeah. at Einstein, though. Well, I, now I do. And they might think I'm Einstein, but you know how many times that I had to stick my finger in, in different sockets. And that's the thing. You have to be able to go out there and try something that you don't know the answer to. If you fail, you will find the answer. If you succeed, you might find the answer, but probably not as well as if you fail. So my advice to the guys in my shop is always, you want to get somewhere, you want to go somewhere, do it. Go do it. Oh, you want to be in you know, management or whatever? Cool. You know how you're going to get to that point? Go do something. Go. You, you want to know how you want to 
run this machine, well, go, go do it, you know? And it, it, it's about how brave you can be in, in doing the things that you otherwise would have been scared of a result. Why? Who cares? Yeah. Um, you know, I lost my dad a few years ago, and one of the best lessons I ever got from that was, you're not going to be here very long. It's, it's a short life, and you better enjoy it. So part of that is taking risk. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, what would you say, you know, you've, you've been doing this for some time, uh, but with timber stoves in particular, what would you say has been the hardest part? Have you ever had a moment of like self doubt? Um, if you can do it, I mean, I, I think personally part of what has allowed this business to do what it's doing is because I am a very naive person. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm a go getter, you know, I, I'll set my, my goal and I will go get it. So, you know, it's, it's for me, not something that's an option. I, I'm not a failure. I will, I will never be a failure. I, I will try my best at whatever I can and I will win. Um, I think most of what supports that is that I think I'm a good person. Uh, I try to be a good person. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not a perfect person, but if you're doing the right thing and you think that you have something that is worth sharing with people, uh, you can you can definitely succeed in in doing that as long as you give uh, the effort. It's about the the will to be driven, and if you're able to find those little things that keep you driven, uh, and I have a huge remedy. I ain't gonna tell you my little bookcase full of, of remedies, but. Uh, you know, some are physical, some are uh, uh, mental, you know, it takes a whole book of things to keep you motivated so that you stay on course. Because if you let it just like life beat you up, it fucking will. And uh, here's another big thing I bring to my shop is attitude. And a lot of people preach attitude and, you know, got signs and banners and quotes about attitude, but it, it has to do with your face. <laughs> do you smile? Okay, because when you smile, it makes me feel better. But when you wear a, a fucking face of grief, fuck you. Because all you told me right there without saying anything was that shit's bad, right? So how, how are you going to get positive motivation out of guys if shit's bad all the time the, there's proof in the pudding man if you if you're excited about something and you enjoy life there's more energy there's more ambition it's not hard to figure out right and so i i really carry that with me a lot uh, uh tunes okay i'm always dancing uh i don't give two shits people don't think i can dance some think i can dance but uh um you know, having those things around you that make you feel good. Okay, there's a whole case of of uh, snappets, whatever you call them, some tannerite uh, whip whipper snappers out in the shop, right? Because it's fun. Why would we do that? Well, it puts a smile on your face, and then that makes everybody else happy, and it and it increases work progress. So happiness, man, the culture. The jive around the shop yeah. is such a, a a major factor in keeping people motivated. You know, you talk about motivation in, in like you're talking about like in the future sense, right? Because your goal is to kind of keep your guys motivated to continue to move forward. Where is Timber Stoves in the next five years? Where do you envision the the path forward? Oh, it's such a cool thing for me to be able to get to this point where I feel proud of where we're at. I feel so blessed in where we get to go. Uh, and I'm a goal setter, man. So as far as where we're going, it's, uh, it's really neat because this is the time that I live for. Uh, I, I've built my entire life around this, this point in the business, which is having the ability to create a goal that is the top. Um, there, there's nothing bigger to me than taking my products and making them accessible to everyone, at least on this continent. Um, we're working on getting some stuff in, in other parts of the world, 
but for me, uh, I, I get to put a, a, a product that I know does more um, for people than just make them warm. Uh, that's something we can talk about in a little bit, but the, 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 the ability to sell something to somebody because of that necessity, right? Uh, and be able to answer to that need, uh, awesome. And that's where we're at. And, and that's where we get to take this. We get to take this to any person that has that need. Uh, everybody's cold. There's no point in somebody's life when they're not cold. So my product, a patio heater, has the ability to get as big as we want to be. Um, I, I have another product that is, is right behind that in the cooking spectrum of things. And uh, I feel just as confident in that product uh, as I do in my patio heater. So, you know, when I talk about uh, where we're going and, and, and what the next level is for us with our guys, uh, you know, they, they see, they see uh, you know, maybe a level ahead, right? Like, okay, you know, he said we were going to build 200 this week. And yeah, shit, we're building 200 this week. Uh, you know, they see that. Uh, they're not seeing what I'm seeing, which is, uh, you know, big poster boards, you know, Super Bowl commercials, uh, getting to that that level of success that I know we can get to. And I'm, I'm 100% confident we will get to that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's us growing as a team. Um, and that's the only thing that's going to stop us is how well I raise this business under one roof. Um, and, and I know we can do it. I've got such a good group of guys. Gabe, I've in the last five, six years been able to, to, uh, group up a team of dudes that, um, they don't just believe in what I'm doing. Um, they emulate everything that I'm doing in regards to production, in regards to sales, in regards to ethics and in, in regards to customer service. Um, it, it's so amazing because all these components that are required to have a successful business, you know, the better you get at them, the more successful you're going to be. And we're getting to this point where everybody's so real, really, really good at what they're doing. We're fucking killing the game right now. And it's because of that. And, and that comes from them taking on the way that I coached them what my expectation is for them to relay that to that next level of, of, of our employee employment. Yeah. And um, so I, I feel real adamant that you gotta, you gotta make sure that they're small groups. Okay. You can't get, let your groups to get too big. Things gotta be on a personal ba basis. You come in, you're having a bad day that screws up my shop. All right. So it's my job to make sure that you're taken care of. Right. And that's how I treat every one of my employees. They are my friend. I am taking care of them. They do go home and pay their bills and feed their families with the income that's generated from this business. That is my responsibility to make sure that those people are taken care of. There's so many things that are important in that ethical part of this business that is what's allowing this business to grow at the rate it is. Uh, it's called doing it right. It's called being, being good. Um, there's a lot of that loss, Gabe, in the corporate world. And I, I'll tell you, I got a lot of employees that they could be paying a lot more money uh, if they went and worked for somebody else. But guess what? They don't. They don't work for those guys. They work for me. And it's because they love coming to work. And I can't tell you how much that means to me that I get to know that from my guys. But we have something special. Yeah. Um, they know that. I know that. Uh, we're going to take this business, um, well, where, where we all know it can go, which uh, we say the top. I like it. And you know, one of the things you mentioned is you, the, the diversity that you're adding to the actual product line. Can you speak a little bit about that? You said the timber stove is just more than a heater. What all does the timber stove do? Well, so the timber stove was designed to be a patio heater, a replacement heater uh, for the current propane patio heater on the market. It uh, definitely projects more BTUs. Uh, that would be the amount of heat that you're feeling from the product. Uh, but you also get to see fire. Uh, that's a big component to the success of our product. Um, this uh, amount of heat that's generated from this patio heater, uh, obviously my inquisitive mind is thinking about what else can I do with this product? If you have the heat, you might as well be cooking on it. So that drove me to my next product. I've made a camp stove. Uh, that camp stove 
did two things. It was a heater and then it uh, also uh, cooked on the top surface and then had an oven. So I was able to create this camp stove for about a year and a half, almost two years until I was uh, driven to a point where I couldn't make any money on it. Uh, it was difficult to make. It was hard to sell. Um, you know, it's it, it's not your everyday product that people are selling. You know, camp stove, outdoor pet camp stove, uh, camping camp stove, you know. Um, and, and that's part of the lesson in business is you try things and if they fail, you, sometimes you fucking pack it up. Uh, that's what happened with the camp stove. Maybe someday we'll bring that back out when we've got a, a much bigger audience, you know, and maybe that's the, the time and place thing. Um, but uh, th that led me to the next step in, in the cooking, which uh, for me was um, getting that griddle, that cooking surface. Um, and, and so I created a, a design that basically puts a, a griddle on top of a patio heater, um, on top of a stove. So now you have this interchangeable component that you can you can essentially cook on, um, take it with you and cook on. Uh, and it's a great product. It's actually our best selling accessory. Um, and, and, and that just continues, uh, you know, uh, this new pizza oven that I've designed, that that's a, a necessity for me uh, when I was creating the griddle. I kept on playing with componentry that held the heat in. Uh, so I at one time was, you know, cutting Schaefer pans, Schaefer pans in half and hinging them and they fit great. And I just cut the circle <laughs> out for our stovepipe and, you know, it's R&D, right? I yeah. mean, it's, it's, it's the best part about this business is being able to have an idea and go cut up some metal and, and see if you can make it breathe. Yeah. But the, the, the difference in the patio heater to cook inside of things is it's, it's just, it's what I love. It's what I grew up around. Um, my dad cooking all the time. I love cooking for people. I'm sure I got that from him, but it's, it's just such a treat to create uh, these two products, which now I'm, I'm so incredibly amazed that I, I feel confident in, in both of them um, that we can take to the masses. So this, this new cooking product that I've designed, it's a separate uh, design from the heater. It's actually just a cylinder of pellets that you fill, you light with fire gel on the very top, and then you place uh, inside a box. And inside of the box has three different levels. And depending on what level you put that cylinder of pellets into is the temperature that you're gonna get on either the griddle or because the products are interchangeable with this burn box system, you can put a pizza oven on it. So you can put either a pizza oven or a griddle on top of what we call this burn box. And it's completely powered by gravity. Um, and, and what we call the Venturi effect, that's the effect of the hot air rising through our stove pipe. That's actually how our patio heaters work as well. And it's a, it's a main player in, in the design and engineering of these products. But this, this new cooking product, uh, you know, it, it takes me almost back to the, the, the easy charcoal days, but it's easier. Uh, you don't have to light the charcoal and then pour it over your barbecue. This, you're simply just lighting the pellets, putting it into the slot for the desired temperature, and you're cooking. So, um, you know, it's a new product. Uh, not a lot of people know about it, but the, the passion for me is as real as... Uh, the, the the first day that I designed the first patio heater, uh, you just, you know, you got something there, you know, it's the beginning. Um, so we're going to, we're going to branch from there. Uh, but we got this other side to the business that is starting to make its own household name. Um, the wood pellet patio heater section that allows these other, you know, side gigs, uh, this cooking sector of the business to be powered and for me, it, it makes sense, you know, a stove uh, in the dictionary represents something that either is for heating or for cooking. Um, it's the same world, right? So here I'm making these heaters, I make heat. Uh, yeah, I can make things uh, get hot so, uh, so we can cook in them. Um, it's all indirect cooking too. So that's a huge plus in what I'm doing. Makes it easy to, to cook food. Um, and then you got the, the wood pellet side of things, the environmental, and it's just, okay, we're in such a good uh, a business right now for the 21st century. We get to show people what is 
you know, right in regards to a renewable fuel, uh, something that uh, comes from Oregon. You know, we're all about the, the, the renewable energy here. We're all about green, uh, but, but this is wood. And, 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 and the ability to, to take something that is essentially coming from a waste product, um, wood pellets are made from sawdust. So the leftovers, the byproduct from some, from lumber mills, you know, we're making a, a biofuel out of, and, and, and that allows us to, to make these other products. This, this, the category around wood pellets and that wood pellet product category is just going to continue to grow. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot bigger in other countries like Europe. Um, they don't have as much of the resource of the lumber as we do. So we actually supply a lot of our, our pellet fuel that we make here in the US to Europe. So they're, they're actually a lot further ahead in regards to that. But you know we understand it here in the US, everybody loves it. It's more of a recreational tool uh, right now. But uh, as far as the home heat, heating sense goes, uh, pellet stoves for in, inside homes are starting to really explode uh, as far as uh, growth um, and it's just going to get bigger and bigger so the wood pellet industry is is such a fun industry to be in it's going to keep growing it's good for our planet uh, it's good for a lot of things now for those that are listening and they're interested about this product where can they find it where can they go look at it are there are there stores brick and mortars or is it online where can they find your product yeah we've got uh, brick and mortar stores out there that carry our product uh, hop on our website and type in your zip code. It'll give you a dealer locator. Uh, the website would be timberstoves.com. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's definitely a product demanded right now. Uh, we, we get real busy this time of year uh, as the, the temperatures have dropped. But yeah, I think more and more people are spending their time outside. And uh, that that's even in the summertime. It's kind of funny. The... Uh, the use of our product, we, we see the most use um, in the summertime, which is when the least amount of sales are. So it, it, it's, it's a really weird uh, business to, to analyze uh, because, you, again, you know, starting a new business, you don't, you don't get any of that stuff. Um, but we, we have, you know, really understood to the point of people want to be outside. They don't, once they're out there, they, they don't want to go back in. Um, and, and that's a, a favor of our product. You know, it's a, it's a thing you fill up and you let her buck and she'll go until you shut her off. Nice. Now, what advice would you have for the listeners? Maybe an inspiring entrepreneur, somebody that's thinking about getting to a small business. What advice would you have for them? Which part, like what to go for, how to get there. Just more, any advice, any advice that you, what, what's some key advice, maybe things to watch out for or things that you learned throughout the way that you're glad you learned. Yeah, I was actually really fortunate that I didn't get any funding, um, outside funding for my business or businesses when I jumped in. Um, I think that no matter how big you are, whether you're a giant business um, and you want to start a new product, you are better off starting with no funds because it is going to take that most efficient route to actually get to that end result anyway. So by that, I mean the mistakes that are going to be made. You could spend millions of dollars, you know, to try and get to that point that one guy could have made those mistakes in his garage, you know, by dicking around. Uh, so that that new meme or whatever that's going around that's hilarious about to fuck around and find out is so fucking true. Um, that is the that is so good. I I love seeing that. Uh, that would be my some of my advice would be, you have to fuck around and find out, but you need to be very efficient at doing that. So that means go use your resources. Uh, you cannot go spend money. Um, the money doesn't exist. Uh, you don't make money until you're uh, you're a ways in, and I mean a ways in. So you got to believe. Uh, if you don't believe in your shit, it's going nowhere. Uh, so you better believe. Uh, you, you better find the remedy for some uh, some energy. And uh, for me, uh, 
I, I take things personally. Uh, so a lot of my energy comes from holding things against people, animosity, <laughs> uh, you know, wanting to set the, 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 the standard, you know, they're just, I, I, I like to power myself by that stuff. It might not be the right way to do it. I'm sorry, you know, but uh, um, I'm also a really nice guy. Uh, and ask any of my employees, they'll tell you I'm the nicest guy on the planet. And, and, and that's how I want to live my life. I want to be real direct. I want to be as hardcore as I can on making sure I'm giving the best that I can. And, and if I got to use a little animosity against somebody to do that, then I might. I, I, I've stopped calling people things to their faces. I, I've stopped hitting things. Uh, you know, you got, you got to grow, <laughs> you got to grow. And in order to grow, you have to learn what those mistakes are. And I've, I've had a lot of mistakes, Gabe. It's, it's been what probably powers this business um, so well, so fast, you know, now that we're at these levels where we can, we can see that uh, success uh, because I have the support, I have the people, I have the capital and it's, it's awesome. It's awesome to watch this thing launch, but it does not come from uh good luck uh it, it, it all is from trial and error yes it is all from trial and error tyson traeger from timber stoves thank you again so much for coming on the show for those folks listening we'll have uh timber stove information on the website as well as the newsletter the shades of e.com you can go and subscribe there you can also follow us on the social sites at the shades of e tyson do you have uh, what are your social sites for the timber stoves so you can see us, uh, yep, at Timber Stoves on Instagram, at Timber Stoves on Wood Pellet Products. Uh, the, the main business is Wood Pellet Products. We've been operating under that umbrella for quite a while. But Timber Stoves is our brand of patio heaters, and that brand is going to carry us into the future. So Timber Stoves, you'll see it. You'll see it on hats and shirts everywhere someday. I love it. I love it. Tyson Traeger. From the great city of Mount Angel, Oregon. Only the best come out of there. Again, folks, if you're listening, please uh, subscribe to the newsletter at theshadesofe.com and follow me at the Shades of E on the social sites. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.